thanks for joining me, first of all. I really appreciate your time because it's I it goes way back. I mean, I remember taking one of your first After Effects courses and just thinking which, by the way, great job on the branding on that because every video I got to hear that nice, catchy video school online with the animation. Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. stuck in my head through the whole course, but it was actually great. I mean, it's a good job. So, um, but so you have two hundred twenty over two hundred twenty thousand students on Udemy right now. I just I just saw that number and it's it's growing even more. And um, I think sixty nine courses, unless you re- uh, released one since yesterday. <laughs> No, that's probably right. <laughs> yeah. So, and you're the founder of Video School Online, and you're considered a best-selling instructor. So, uh, there's a few things I wanted to dive into, but the, the, probably the ultimate question I wanted to ask you was: first, how how in the world do you have the drive? I mean, 69 courses, as much as I've seen you release and and promotional things, what gives you that drive to really you know get in there and, and just continue to move? That's a really good question. And um, well, th- this whole teaching online journey started in 2012. And it was one of the first things that actually worked for me. I've always been entrepreneurial. I've always tried different things. But for something to work online where someone was buying my classes, it really just inspired me. And it I got addicted to creating courses. And so when I started, the the whole goal was, okay, I'm going to create courses and keep creating courses until I could replace my full-time income at my full-time mm-hmm. job. And my success, because I didn't know how to market really well, I didn't know how to build my own brand or email funnels or anything like that, the way that I had success was by creating more and more courses so that... I could have lots of different mini streams of income coming in. Uh, so other people can create an online course and sell it for $500, $2,000, or even $100 and drive all those a bunch of traffic to it and make a ton of money from it. I wasn't able to do that, especially starting out. So it was always about just, okay, well, what else could I teach next? And I, I always had fun with it, too. It was like, this is... The, it was all up to me if I wanted to do it. And I wasn't like a full-time job where I had a boss telling me that I had to do this or that. And I think if someone else was telling me that I had to do courses and create more courses, I would probably not enjoy it as much as I do now. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just kind of like been this thing that's for people who have tried online teaching, it's kind of addictive to see people enroll and then you obviously start to make money from that and this world is so new though that it's like kind of scary and it's like well I want to make sure that I do everything I can to make sure it lasts as long as possible and one of the ways that I feel like I'm doing that is just by updating my courses or creating new courses Um, because if I stop creating courses and I just had a bunch of courses that I launched three or four years ago you know, those courses could stop selling um, really quickly. So I'm always like, okay, well, I got to keep updating my courses or or creating new courses to stay on top of the game because it is kind of a game. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's just been something that it was finally something that I found that worked and I enjoyed doing. And I've been doing it for five years now and I haven't, you know, ever felt like I don't enjoy doing this. There's been times where I felt like, oh, this is starting to get a little repetitive. But compared to a lot of things that I used to bounce around to, like I've never felt like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, I think it's really funny because you mentioned, you know, getting started and Udemy because they have their own marketing platform to where they do a lot of the marketing for you, which is awesome, really. But I, I... you know, one of my pet peeves is when you go out and you're learning how to do something and then, you know, you get halfway through this process of how someone's doing something, they say, and then what you're going to do is you're going to send this out to your email list or, you know, out to your YouTube channel or whatever, and you don't have that. So I think that's cool that you've been able to just build it up from nothing. Now, you mentioned that you're worried about like courses going stagnant. You're worried about, you know, kind of losing sales from that. Through the five years you've been doing it, has your revenue increased or has it main, you know, been about the same other than video school online, but mainly on Udemy? How has that been affected? 
Well, that was the cool thing too on Udemy, and that's why I kept creating more and more courses was because I saw that uh, my revenue would increase and kind of maintain itself every time I created a new course. So in the first few six months, I was making $100 a month and 200 and then you know, creating more and more courses until I got over $1,000 a month. And it seemed to be pretty s steady as long as I did a little bit of like use the promotional announcements myself. And at this time, I also started, you know, driving traffic to my courses myself with YouTube and my website, but all from scratch. And it kept increasing as I created more cor courses until they actually did their big pricing change in the middle of 2016. Right. Or at the beginning of 2016. And at that point, it was the opposite. I would create more and more courses, but my income per month. Oops, <laughs> sorry. <right. laughs> That's tip number one for people doing podcasts and <laughs> online courses and video. Turn off your phones. Um, but like in the middle of 2016, I saw that I would create new courses and my income would actually drop or just like maintain itself if I had like a really good launch. And before the pricing change, I, w I was having launches where on Udemy, I was doing five, six, seven thousand dollars in the first week of a course launch, which was nuts. Yeah. And I felt like this was like as good as it got. And then the pricing change happened and everything kind of started dropping and that's when I started getting a little worried about Udemy, the platform, and I started branching out to my other areas, other platforms. Uh, but in the end of 2016, Udemy kind of turned things around and everything started picking up again. I also started focusing more on using the 80-20 rule to figure out what 20% of my classes really drive 80% of my revenue. Mm -hmm. And I focused on recreating some old classes or updating some old classes and finding topics that I really knew that would do well. Like up until when I started, I was just like doing courses for fun. I was, I had a beer brewing class. I had a class on how to adopt a cat. I had, <laughs> I had like 10 After Effects courses, which have all sold. But at the end of the day, the bigger, more complete courses uh, have sold better and lasted longer. But now in the start of 2017 and the last few months of 2016, I've seen when I create more courses, the income continues to increase. And I always kind of base, um, I use November and January as a good benchmark for the year. Yeah. And for the past few years, every November has basically doubled in revenue from the, the previous November. And that's still happening. And my my whole thing is like, OK, it's the start of the year, but I'm just going to work hard and and try to build up more courses and better courses and dominate the the niches that I'm in so that when it comes to Black Friday sales and January sales, which are the big months for online courses, I can hopefully try to double <laughs> this year's income, which every year I'm like, there's no way I'm going to double it next year. <laughs> there's right. no way. And um, I mean, I'm not you know, I'm pretty open with my my income so I can say that like the first year it was probably around a thousand but then it doubled to ten thousand one year then it doubled from there another year and then it doubled again so we're talking a, a lot of money and it's really crazy yeah <laughs> so, but it still seems to be increasing on Udemy um, right. and I'm, I'm seeing new people start better and faster than I started and I always think well if they just stick with it, like they can, they can do really well at this. A lot of people are like, oh, it's too late. Like if only I started in 2012 or 2013, but there, there's going to be a lot of people saying that in three or four years that they wish they started in 2017. Yeah. Same thing. I know a lot of the programming yeah. courses are really doing great on Udemy. I see that a lot. I know a little bit of programming, but not enough to do a course about it, but yeah, me too. And in, in, I definitely couldn't teach a programming course, but I am teaching a WordPress website course because that's something yeah. I know good enough. And I, I feel like that's close enough to programming that if I can kind of fit, find a place in the search results for WordPress, right. then I'll be doing pretty well. Because I know it's one of WordPress, I think, is one of the top 20 search terms yeah. on Udemy or something like that. Yeah. And so I know... You use Teachable on your site, is that right? I know. Yep. Have you been happy with that 
so far? Yeah, I started with Teachable like pretty early on when they were kind of new. I hadn't even heard of Thinkific, which is kind of their big competitor. There's other ones out there too, but I'm pretty happy with Teachable. It's got all the tools that I, I really need. And what I like most about it right now is that you can charge a subscription for individual courses or you can bundle together courses. So basically create like a whole membership site for your own courses. And that's what I've been focusing on um, with my courses on my own site. Because before I had, I do have all my courses on Teachable and I sell them individually as well. But I was struggling with, do I promote my courses on Teachable from like my own blog or YouTube or do I promote my courses on Udemy? Right. And what's the difference? And I found that if I'm actually promoting the courses on Udemy, then it seems to do better in the long run because if my course on Udemy does really well, then all the marketing and the traffic that Udemy gets, it just exponentially grows that course and that course's revenue. But on my own site, I'm promoting the subscription model. And I actually just changed yesterday how I do it. Um, I now have all of my courses for a $9 a month fee. And I, I was actually inspired by someone who I interviewed for my podcast who's doing the same thing. And he's doing really well with his own site. And the question is like, well, there's Skillshare where you they charge $9 a month and you can get like 10,000 classes why would someone pay $9 a month on your own platform? But I think the truth is that there's so there's enough people in the world that have never even heard of Skillshare or even Udemy. Right. And if you do a little bit of content marketing with blog articles and YouTube, you can drive enough traffic to your site uh, and get people enrolled in your own platform um, right. and not have to compete with Skillshare or even Udemy. Yeah, Skillshare just changed their their pricing model, which I don't know how that's affected you, but it went from like, um, I think it's minutes played now versus enrollments for active enrollments. So I'd like to see how that does. But so you, you were doing bundles before, so you're bundles for nine or, or different pricing. Is that right? Yeah, I had, um, and this was a problem too. I was with my own audience and because I've created so many courses on all kinds of topics, it was hard to figure out how to grow an audience on my own platform because I had video courses, I had After Effects courses, I had photography courses, I had business courses. How do I like create a website that's a home for all those people? And so I thought that it was a good idea to actually segment those audiences. So I had bundles for like all 10 of my photography courses for $9 a month mm. or all 20 of my video production related courses for $9 a month. And I was, I actually was, up until yesterday, I had about 100 or so, 150 people across all of my bundles enrolled, paying about $9 a month. So that's pretty, that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. But then after talking to this other guy on my podcast, I thought, man, maybe I could grow it more if I just <laughs> put all my classes in one. And for, as a student, like, Maybe it's a little bit easier if you know that like if you see like that there's bundles specifically for you, but you might also be more enticed to buy to pay a monthly subscription if you just got all of my courses. Right. So we're, we're going to see how it goes. Yeah, that's pretty good. Well, yeah, I, I still follow your progress over there, too. I think you've made it. So you started that from scratch, didn't you? I mean, you didn't buy a domain or anything for that. For, for Teachable video school, or for my own website? For Video School Online. Yeah, that I mean, that started after I started teaching my own courses. So I okay. started Video School Online in 2013, I think, because I quickly realized that I should be, I should have my own platform and I should at least have information about my courses on my own space that I have had control of. It's grown into more, you know, the whole system of trying to build an audience, email marketing, um, funnels. And now I have everything branded as video school online with my YouTube channel and the social media that I do. But that, that all started from scratch. It, I didn't have an audience before I started teaching online courses. Right. Okay. So you went from, I know you went to, is it Loyola University? And then you were doing Udemy. So now in 2017, which is crazy, um, 
how do you know like this is where you're supposed to be or kind of in your life in your career where would you see yourself you know how do you want to answer that question of of where you see yourself now versus your five-year-old self well five five five-year-old past self (laughs) yeah i mean I would have never expected to be where I am today. I feel very, very fortunate just in terms of financially. uh, Five years ago, I was just out of school, Loyola Marymount University. I private school, I paid for it um, with loans and uh, over $100,000 in debt. And when I graduated or when I started school, that, you know, the whole taking out loans things like, it didn't really like bother me. Like it just was, I thought it was normal. (laughs) But then as soon as I graduated and I realized that I had to pay like over a thousand dollars a month in loans and it would take like 20 or 30 years to pay them off. That was, that really hit me uh, as soon as I graduated. And so I, you know, I've, I've always, the thing is I've always been pretty good with money and I've always like tried to have jobs or make money and save money. But the whole loan thing, I just didn't realize it going into college, like how big a deal that was. So as soon as I kind of came to that, uh, you know, that realization, I was like, okay, I'm going to like crush these loans as much as possible, (laughs) but it wouldn't have been without, I, I wouldn't have been able to pay them off so quickly without teaching online. Um, But, you know, coming back to like where I am today and if this is like where I'm supposed to be, who knows? I mean, (laughs) this is where I'm supposed to be right now. But I look five or 10 or 15 years in the future and I have no clue. Like I imagine in five years, like I hope this is still as successful as it is and more successful. But when I think of like 40 or 50 year old Phil, I it's hard to imagine just doing the same thing um, because I I could just keep reteaching the same content that I'm teaching and that might work. But also at some point, like I'm just going to run out of stuff to do and I might get bored with this. Right. Um, so but b- back to what I was also saying earlier, this is like the first project, the first side gig that I did that was successful and at least right now, after a year or two, or after five years, I'm I'm not looking for something else. Like mm-hmm. I had three full time jobs after college, and after eight or nine months at each of those positions, I started looking for other work because I was getting bored. I wanted to do my own thing, so I started wedding videography and I started doing that as my own business. But after a while of doing that, I got tired of it. And so I feel like I'm pretty fickle in the things that I like to do. But with teaching online courses and building my own business, uh, I haven't really felt that way. Uh, And it's been successful. So that helps, too, that, you know, when I transitioned to doing this full time back in, I think it was like May of 2015, when I really dedicated myself to doing this full time, I, I told my wife, I was like, let's see how this goes for six months. And if it's doing just as good or better I'll stick with it and it was it's grown since then so yeah it's kind of always like that we'll see how it is in the next six months and if it keeps doing as well or better then I'm going to keep doing it (laughs) well I think it's important because you know I consider myself an entrepreneur you're an entrepreneur and we always have that desire you know like to do something else and I've been through a few jobs in my life and more than I want to say, and it's just I've never found that satisfaction until I've worked, you know, more from home, doing things like that. So was Udemy always kind of your part time uh, thing, or did you ever experiment with other things during that time? Well, when I started with Udemy, I was working full time, and it was I was creating my courses at night and then going to work during the day, and that was for a few years, and I even. I went up to Berkeley. I followed uh, my wife, Isabel. She was getting her master's degree up there. And I thought I was going to just freelance and do Udemy. But then I ended up getting another full-time job up there because there was a good opportunity. Um, So it was always kind of a part-time thing. And I was doing other other jobs. And I still like doing video production and video editing work um, because I, I like teaching about it, but I also like actually doing what I teach. 
So, and that's good as a, a student. I remember college professors who hadn't made movies in 15 or 20 years trying to teach us how to make videos in the modern world. And <laughs> I always felt like these guys don't know what they're talking about. So I feel like I want to make sure that as I teach courses, I'm up to date with all the latest techniques and I'm actually, you know, practicing what I preach. So I, I do try to still do my own projects. And actually this has allowed me to focus more on my my own projects. Like I've made a short documentary last year that uh, I'm submitting to film festivals now and it's gotten into a couple. And I wouldn't have been able to do that if I was working a full-time job and I didn't have the freedom and the flexibility to like take a few days off and go shoot a project and you know spend some of my own time and money like to pay for a composer to, to make that project as good as it could right. be. So this that's been another cool thing. And that's that's ultimately like when I look at my life and at least right now, my goal is that I could continue to make enough money with teaching online. And also I could work on a few like pre passion projects myself um, because my real passion is documentary making. Yeah. And so if I ever stop teaching online, I would probably try to pursue that more but i also want to just continue to do that while i teach online mm -hmm. do you have that on vimeo the documentary is not on vimeo yet but it will be probably at the end of the year to, because i'm submitting it to festivals some festivals don't allow you to submit a project if it's already live online oh god so it. um but it'll be online at the end of 2017 for sure okay cool yeah you'll have to send me the link when you get it um yeah all right so uh I I sent over a question about asking about your experience as an entrepreneur. I know we've kind of touched on that, so I'm going to kind of skip over that and go to the next one. But um, you talked about, you know, 50-year-old Phil. And I think that's funny because the way you phrase that. But so the things that you're doing now, okay, I think you're – I think it's safe to say you're probably financially well off right now, and that may or may not be the case in 20 years. I hope not. But what do you doubt what you're doing now to set yourself up for the future? I mean, I know you said you're good with money. You know, I, you t even taught some financial things. So do you doubt kind of the steps that you're taking now? You have this degree uh, for your long-term plans. That's a really good question. And I think just the way that I am, I'm always a little bit doubtful about just the future. I think that's why I'm good with finances in a sense that it like makes me worry about it. So I like try to prep, prep as much as possible. Like my wife will say like you save too much or you invest too much, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, so, and when like probably two years ago, if you asked me that same question, I would feel like, gosh, if Udemy disappears, if my, on if just online teaching in general disappeared and all that income, what would I do? I'd, I'd probably feel pretty, worried but I remember talking to a, a friend online Matt Bernstein who was also teaching online um, and he was telling me like if this disappears all of that this experience with building your own business making a product selling that product that's all great skills that you have now that you could market your, yourself to a job or just take it to another bit form of business. And, and I really feel like that now. I feel like because job, I haven't interviewed for a job in a while, but I, I feel like there's a lot of companies out there that don't care about your degree. But if I told them that I grew a business and we sold over a million dollars in course sales in the first five years, and we grew our following to over 200,000 students, I feel like someone I could take that to an interview and they could that would be pretty impressive. And I think I could use a lot of the skills that I've learned in another job. So I'm not really worried about finding another job. I think I do worry about finding a job that I'll love, though. Right. Um, that's because I've never had a full time job where I could I felt like I could stay there for my whole life. Right. But after doing this, after the funny <laughs> thing is like, you know, we wear so many hats as a Udemy instructor and trying to build our own website. 
and it's always new every single day you're always trying to come up with something new to sell and new, something new sometimes i'm just like man i just want to like work on an assembly line where i can like <laughs> sit and do the same exact thing every day and not even think about it and i know people if people do that they, they, i don't want to sound disrespectful to, to them because they might think i'm crazy for saying that but but sometimes i feel like i don't want to be the boss and i just want to like be be told what to do but like yeah. also enjoy it you know <laughs> yeah that's so true i mean last june i actually came to work at home full time and this uh-huh. past january i went back to work and so i have a degree in it and so i'm working at a local university in the it department right now but i i mean i have good hours i negotiated hours from 7 to 3 but the, I mean, the important thing here is that for the last six months, I have been working and working and working, trying to make it from home. And I went back to work. Um, I probably, I could have made it maybe without, but definitely struggling. But going back and now realizing that all I have to do is show up to work every day and I get a paycheck yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it is yeah. kind of nice. I have to admit that because for those six months, I was out, you know, meeting with people, you know, getting jobs. Mm. Um Thankfully, I was able to set up a six-month, you know, contract with one of the customers I was working with, and uh, but through that time, it really showed, uh, you know, what I was passionate about, what I wanted to do, because I was doing website design and video work, and you really can't do both of those at the same time. So, uh, yeah. you know, WordPress is, I, I really know a lot about WordPress, and I think that I'm, I love to do web design, web, you know, stuff in WordPress, but ultimately, video is my passion, but you don't always hear you always hear the success stories, but you don't hear about the people who had to go back to work. And so I think yeah. it's it's cool to hear how you you know you actually went back to work and now look at what you're doing. And I hope that I can follow that same kind of path to where that's kind of what my wife and I have talked about. Is like let's see how this year goes because I'll be here for six to twelve months and then you know hopefully get that platform going. And it's just it it's it's an interesting journey, but I completely agree with you. <laughs> Well, yeah, and I think it's a. It's honestly, and I think Isabel just, uh, my wife just asked me about this, or we were talking about it, and I highly recommend people trying to do this while they have another source of income because I've seen so many people, either who don't have a job, or they leave their jobs too early, and they're trying to build an income with online courses, and it just makes the whole experience so much more stressful. It makes them create courses just to make money yeah, and or just to focus on like, okay, I got to create more courses to make money. And even though I kind of talked about how like that was a driving force for me creating a bunch of courses in the beginning to, you know, increase my revenue, I've also always felt like I've been lucky that like I was for three years, I was able to do it and make mistakes and learn from them and not depend on this income uh, for my bills and you know if you're depending on making money from your online courses to pay for your housing and bills then that that's really stressful so yeah it's especially when people are starting out I think it's better to have that other source of income and yeah take it every six months at a time and see kind of how it goes Mm -hmm. yeah and when you're creating when you're creating courses for just money or just trying to get the income and you're doing it for all the wrong reasons, then you could, I mean, I think a lot of people burn out too because they're like, this is not going to work for me. It's, they're expecting results within six to 12 months or, you know, whatever's Mm -hmm. going on in their life. And then they could just give up and and miss out on the life that they could have, you know, and that's what, Mm -hmm. it's just terrible that people can't do that or because they're impatient or whatever that case is. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, if you can do it. And I look at my old courses and I know I've made that mistake. I know the courses that I've done just because I felt like I wanted to get a course out to promote and make extra money that month. Those are the those are my worst courses. And those are the (laughs) ones that don't end up having long term success. But if there's ones where I really focus on making it the best that it can be and not really caring about how well it does when after I launch it, <laughs> those ones actually end up being the most successful ones. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's important. Yeah. So what would you what would you say to those, okay, just starting out or people that are interested in teaching online, what advice would you give to them about 
following their skills or creating those courses or, you know, following that purpose. Because as an entrepreneur, we talked about having that fire. And, you know, I really think that that comes down to people that feel like they just have this other purpose in life. Maybe they don't feel like moving widgets on the assembly line, or maybe they don't feel like, you know, even being a videographer out there, maybe they are interested in video. But what advice would you give to those people that maybe are just starting or have been doing it for less than a year? Well, if you're doing online teaching, I think the best thing is to really care and think about the students on the other side. And it's the interactions with the students and it's seeing students actually benefit from your courses and message you or leave you nice reviews that ultimately that should be why you do it. And if you're getting good reviews, then the money is going to follow. Uh, so really focus on the the student because that's going to you're going to end up making a better course. And even if it's s slow at the start, um, just focus on the few students that you have to to make sure that you create the best product. Um, but like we've been talking about, um, just try not to focus on the, the money. Don't worry about being perfect either. And I was just talking to a friend today about how he's making this course and it's getting really long and he's been working on it for a couple months and he doesn't know if he's going to even continue it with it. And I said, dude, just finish it. Just like <laughs> make yourself finish it, find the time to do it. And it, if it's not perfect, that's totally fine. And I think people, we, if you listen to podcasts or read books about entrepreneurs, you've heard this a million times, but get, let go of being perfect because I've, I've never been perfect with one of my courses and Nick, you know, takes some of my, has taken some of my earlier classes and I'm glad that you like them, but <laughs> I know that there's a lot that we're not perfect. And, uh, I look back and I'm like, wow, my courses now are way better. But now if I, you know, in a few years, I know the classes I'm making now are, I'm going to look back and feel like, oh man, those, those aren't that good. Uh, <laughs> so just a combination of not feeling like you have to be perfect, not, worrying too much about the equipment, use what you have. Uh, and if you can do it while you have another source of income, so you're not depending on it, that's, that's what I would suggest. And you know, the, there's, there's lots of things I would say. If I started over again, I would start my website earlier. I would start putting out YouTube content earlier. I would start my email list earlier with YouTube. I have a YouTube course and I get comments all the time from people who just launched their YouTube channel a couple weeks ago talking about how they have implemented all of our strategies and they're not getting subscribers and they're not getting results. Their videos aren't showing up on the first page of search. And I just have to be <laughs> like, oh, I know you want success and and maybe it wasn't clear in the course, but this isn't going to happen overnight with online courses, with your website, and especially with YouTube, though. It's going to take years or th it can be done quickly. There are some viral things, but my success has never been viral. And so all I know is that if I stick with something for years, it, it will be successful or hopefully it will be successful. And so that's my you know, I, my assumption for other people too, is that if you stick with it for months and even years, you're, you're going to have success, but it means, you know, sticking with it. And that, right. that can be hard, especially if you don't see the results initially. Yeah. So I, I understand that. I it's understand like the, that. the number one reason you're going to fail is because you give up. <laughs> yeah, no, cases. totally. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think at the end of the day, remember that I made $62 in my first month and I think that's more than probably most people will make in their first month, but it's also less than a lot of people make in their first month and they, those same people are giving up because they feel like that's not enough, but I've stuck with it and you know, hopefully people will stick with it too. I don't know. How well did you do in your first couple That's months? That's what I'm pulling up. <laughs> I wanted to see actually now that you say that because I mean, I did start... I started last year and um, it has not, I've noticed some, uh, Black Friday was probably my biggest, but I made, my first month I made $5. Now that was because it was like at the end of the month and I, I made a lot more in November because uh, it was mm -hmm. back, that month was like October. So still mm -hmm. really, really new, but uh, November I made like $143. So, I mean, that was 
encouraging. Even the five dollars, I swear, even just seeing yeah. the five dollars on there, thinking that I did something and and knew it was possible online, that was my biggest kind of thing to overcome. So yeah. Well, you definitely got me beat for 62 <laughs> the first month. <laughs> well, I think my second month, though, I probably did less than you, too. I think I, I did probably, I think, around 100. I think I beat past 100, but it was it was less than 140 or so. Yeah. So. Yeah, Black Friday yeah. was big. That's why I knew I had to get another course out there by Black Friday. And it was, it was nice t- to at least see that little bump. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that pretty much wraps everything up. I really appreciate you taking the time to just take the, this today, really, because it's been an inspiration from you to be able to see the journey that you've gone. Because, and I'll wrap up with this, it, I see so many people out there, especially I followed Pat Flynn forever. I know you do too, but yeah. to see his success and to see everything that he's done, he hasn't even really used a lot of what he's gone to school for and just to see every yeah you know and i'll put a link for everybody else for who he is um but since you started with nothing i see him he started when he tracked his income reports at making like eight thousand dollars a month and so i Mm -hmm. think it's and so he had that kind of cushion you know moving from the beginning but coming from someone like you where you have started with zero and you had to have that full-time job it's important for people to know that you can't just be an online instant success, but it is still possible. Yeah, I think it's definitely possible. And I wrote an article that you might have read on my my blog about why 2017 is still a great year to get started with online teaching. And there's one of the things I did when I was researching for that article was just realizing that Udemy, which is the biggest online course marketplace right now, they still haven't reached 99.99% of the world's population. And they have plans to really grow internationally. And if you could just, and I I have probably, I think I've captured less than 1% of that, that market that Udemy has. But if Udemy continues to grow and if they can capture even just 1% of the world's population <laughs> and if you could start teaching te- classes now and you know find an area where you have a little bit more success as long as Udemy continues to grow you're also going to have a ton of success too so right. it's still a great time to get started for yeah. sure it's good to know yeah, it's good to know for people that think that they shouldn't start now because that's kind of that was my scarcity mentality too it's like man i would have had to get started this at 2010 or 2011 you know to get it to grow but it's good. Yeah. So, all right, yeah. Phil. Well, I'll let you go. Um, definitely, when you get the link for that documentary, I know it's down the road, but send it over to me if, for some reason, I don't talk to you until then. <laughs> but, we'll do. Yeah, we'll talk, but I'll I'll send it to you for sure. <laughs> all right. Well, good luck on your next course. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Have a good one. All right, you too. See ya. <laughs>